Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick and in today's video I'm going to talk about something that's super important um, and that is infrastructure investing in ball pythons. So let's kind of cover the first phase of infrastructure in my opinion is going to be your rack systems. That's not true. <laughs> the first phase is actually deciding where do you want to be? How big do you want to be? How many animals do you want to produce? How much are you willing to spend on this and how much is it actually going to be a part of potentially you know you running a business one day with it or you running a small you know operation where you're breeding things that really just make you happy there's so many sides to this so you need to figure out hey are you keeping as pets are you keeping to breed but keep it really small and only work with like what you really like and what you're really motivated with or are you taking it to like a medium, like a hobbyist breeder level where it's like, hey, I just want the hobby to pay for itself and then I'm going to be happy? Or are you taking it to the next stage of like, I want this to establish some form of income for me and I don't know what level that is. Some people, another form of income is an extra thousand dollars a month. Some people, the extra form of income is exactly what they need to live off of so they can quit their day job. So these are all things that will kind of factor into infrastructure and how you invest. The reason to me that infrastructure is important is because you want to make sure you have plenty of rack space for grow out females and grow out males. Uh, this is really important because if you produce an egg, right, and it hatches and it's a snake, whatever that snake is selling for on Morph Market or at shows or whatever have you, You've produced that for essentially the cost of feeding the male and the female and then, you know, whatever electric you use, right? So, and there are just a small portion of that. So, in theory, you're producing an animal for next to nothing that is worth next, you know, worth much, much more. And if you decide to keep that animal, you've in theory produced an animal that might be worth, let's say, $1,500. You produced it for $150, right? You know, all in. So, it's just... That's one of those things where you want to be able to hold back either females and males that you really like or ones that are, you know, you're deeming the most valuable or that the market is deeming the most valuable. And if you limit yourself, I got five snakes, I'm breeding five snakes, I just need five slots. You might be missing out on the opportunity to upgrade within your collection because even if you just have a, a baby rack that's that's huge. I'll show you guys my baby rack in a second, but even if you have a baby rack, they're not going to be able to stay in that and then move just from that to one of these uh, massive tubs here. So they need something in between, like say this, this is 28 quart tub. This is a good grow out tub. You can even, um, there's like this option here to like cut it in half. Um, it has a divider that I can put in here and I can have two open tubs here, uh, 14 quarts that's good size for a grow out, right? So you have something long and you know, so, so I have the capabilities because I only have uh, 24 snakes for a potential uh, 50 to 60 adults, uh, males and females or 27 adult females. And then depending on how I divide this up, you know, I have the potential for another 15, to 20 to 30 sub adult male or female and then eventually I'll need to move stuff on my own as well. But I also have a vision rack. It's uh, I think it's got like 20 slots and I don't have it built in here quite yet. I'm going to eventually when I need it, but I have that. So, and that will be mainly for my males is kind of what I'm leaning toward at this point. But anyway, neither here nor there. Having a plan for where you're going to put these animals and the ones that you hold back is very important just because you don't want to be, you don't want to have your hand forced to say, oh, I produced a better female than, than the mom. I'm going to sell the mom so that female can take her spot. While you can do that, it's just going to set you back two years and it sets you back more and more time, which is kind of the most valuable thing that we all have is just time in general. So. If you're okay with that, then that's okay. But for most of us, I'd like to keep my breeder females for as long as possible because I know what they're going to produce and I know that they're going to be consistent for me or they're not going to be consistent for me. Once you spend years with these animals, you start to learn this one's good, this one's not good, or you know what have you is for what I'm trying to do. So rack space is 
absolutely vital. Infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Make sure that you just have enough of it to fulfill whatever you want to do. I, I have this, all this set up as a really like, maybe like a three to five year plan before I really need to expand, maybe even two years, uh, two to three years probably, before I'm gonna need more rack, more baby rack space, and I'm definitely gonna need another uh, rack system or two in here to fulfill really where I want to be overall. So always have that in mind, and you know, understand too that when you're buying all these animals, you need to make sure that you have the rack system to fulfill them. Now, DIY racks, any racks are perfectly fine. No, no, I'm not saying. I mean, these are. Uh, boa file racks and TGR racks and uh, I think there's one other brand I have in here. I have a mixed match of all of them, but they work perfect. So I'm not saying you gotta go buy Freedom Breeder or ARS or anything like that. You just need a racking system that's gonna work for you and is gonna hold everything that you want to do in this hobby. And that's the important thing is just kind of that conversation with yourself and like, hey, if I have 10 slots, I have plenty for what I want to do, which is perfect. You know, everyone's everyone's different in their goals and in their mindsets which is what makes this hobby really cool. Another thing to consider as far as investing for infrastructure and something that I have done that I'm super happy that I decided to do it and I'm super thankful that I have the room to do it and all that um, is breeding my own rodents. Uh, investing in rodent infrastructure has, has helped me tremendously. Uh, being able to produce everything on my own, being able to always have a food source right literally like 20 feet from me at all times is absolutely wonderful um it's one of those things where as your collection grows your rodent supply is going to increase just because you're having more animals um so the most the more that you can produce on your own is really good and and i'm kind of where i'm at right now is i've kind of decided that my rodent operation is going to increase as this operation increases. And I'm gonna keep it to where I'm 100% self-fed, you know, self, I don't have to worry about anybody else. I don't have to worry about anyone else breeding my rats. That's not to say that every now and then I might not buy some frozen thawed or I might not buy um, I have a big batch of live rodents to feed for a week or two, just seeing where my production's at, because it that's also a very, you know, it's like this, you know, you never really know how production's gonna go. I you know, you get better at it, but you never really know, right? So more people producing them, the better off you are. But once I get to the point where I'm able to produce everything on my own and I'm rolling with that and I'm doing really well with that, that's when I'll start to add more. And it's also taking money that in theory should just be pure snake money and I'm investing it in um, nice rodent rack systems to ensure that my rodent facility is as clean as it can be and is as nice as it can be and is just as easy to maintain as can be because the rodents are very, they take up more of my time than the snakes do but they're so vital to my snakes overall health and kind of everything I want to do here and especially once we start hatching up clutches and things like that, I need baby rodents on hand so that I can feed these guys whenever I want and I can start to like really grow my snakes. But anyway, rodent, if you are going to breed rodents and you want to feed your own collection, the infrastructure to, to breed rodents is very expensive. Um, unless you just build wooden racks on your own, which are fine, that's currently what we have. I have a freedom breeder rack and rodent breeding racks, but uh, I'm sorry. Freedom breeding racks and wood breeding racks for my Norwegian rats, freedom breeder for my ASFs. Um, I obviously like the freedom breeder racks a heck of a lot more. They're easier to clean, they're easier to work with, they slide out better, it's wonderful, but it's very expensive to get the freedom breeder rodent systems uh, all in, and I have to make some more money with these guys before I decide to do that, right? So it's one of those things where you know, spending the money on infrastructure is so important because you never want to run out of room, space, or anything like that because you want to be able to uh, grow 
and you want to be able to pace yourself at whatever rate you want so that you can grow faster, you can grow bigger, you can do more, you know. Don't sleep on infrastructure is just kind of the main point because it is so vital to everything that we do. Have space, have room, have it all. You know, that's that's really important to this and it's definitely overlooked because we always like look at these pretty snakes and stuff like that and, it's, and they're awesome but you got to be able to house them properly. You got to be able to give them everything that they need so that when you spend crazy amount of money on a snake that you feel okay doing it because you know that you're set up for more and more and more and more. And comparatively, the, the, the infrastructure is expensive, but it's nowhere near as expensive as some of your top snakes can be. So when you look at it like that, it's an easy investment to make as long as you know, you're self-producing and you're kind of rolling with things like that. So that's your wrap with this video, guys. I hope it made sense. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and until next time, guys, stay safe and stay positive.